Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, my name is Amit Benbrook. I was born and raised in New York, got my BFA in printmaking at the Maryland Institute College of Art, and uh, now I tattoo full-time in New York for work and have a painting practice on the side. Cool, so what's your focus as an artist? Um, <laughs> figuring it out. Um, when I first, during the pandemic, I took a break from school. School went, you know, online and I veered away from printmaking into painting, moved towards like more natural, you know, resources and like inspiration for my paintings, like went a bit more abstract with them. Um, and then since graduating, I've sort of just stayed away from printmaking. I've started more works on paper, you know, allowed New York to sort of structure my practice. Smaller spaces, can't make big paintings anymore. So I like went back to paper, um, started with like using marker and colored pencil over it. And then the marker felt too intense and I moved to watercolor and colored pencil. Um, and then, yeah, my goals here were just to scale up again and try to like sort of use the space and like the surroundings to be able to kind of bring some like light back into my work a bit more negative space yeah some air to it so can you talk about a foundation of inspiration like is there an influential person artist book or experience that you draw draw from yeah it's i mean there are several artists for sure i feel like really strongly inspired by um, like George O'Keefe and Agnes Pelton and a lot of female painters who are working out in the desert. Anyone who knows me knows I want to go live in the desert one day. Um, so I think that that's sort of like their works and just, um, yeah, like a lot of natural, I think about like just like natural landscapes but super abstracted, you know, like valleys and hills and like all these natural forms and sort of how to abstract them and create like little worlds within them, you know, uh, narratives that don't have like figurative elements. Um, so yeah, I think that I'm sort of, uh, I think part of the reason to come here is I'm hitting this wall with craving making art about neat, like inspired by nature and space and vastness and stuff and then being kind of confined to a city that you feel maybe the opposite of that a lot of the time and like reckoning with how to do that or how to create pieces then that like show both the vastness and kind of like um, constriction and stuff and like balancing out those two. So yeah. So you mentioned it a second ago, but what's, what's like your typical day-to-day -day studio or workspace? Yeah, I, so I live alone. I have a nice big living room. So for a long time I was just waking up and I would make breakfast and just draw on my big living room table um, and my Tattoo studio space is right across the street. So recently we kind of restructured in there and now I have um, like a more proper art studio and more space. That happened right before I came to Azul. So I'm hoping that once I go back, I can keep like scaling up and working bigger. Um, so I'll generally go in and I'll tattoo for a few hours. And then if I don't have a second appointment or something, then I'll try and chip away at a drawing for a few hours. Um, but I'm very sensitive to my surroundings. So when the sun's out, I want to be drawing and when it's not, I don't. Um, so I kind of let all of that structure it. Yeah. And for your last little bit, mm -hmm. um, what's the best piece of advice you've received as an artist? And is there anything you would like to share with other artists? Oh, that's such a good question. I feel like I need to think about these. Take your time. Um, I'm not sure, I think I was just thinking this morning, reflecting on how, as like a young art student, you feel like utterly lost figuring out what you want to make and like having a style or, you know, like a look to your stuff and like, it feels like I felt so kind of like hopeless, like I would never reach that point. And even in the last year, I've watched my work changed so much, but I've like noticed kind of the development of like a visual language that I'd been like yearning for, for all this time. And it was just a result. Everyone says just make and make and draw and draw, you know, and it's kind of about like abundance in that way. Um, and I've realized that through dedicating more time and like energy and genuinely making stuff that you want to make, then that like visual language and fluency will kind of just develop. 
Um, so I guess just patience with all of it. And yeah, it's good to make stuff that you love making and not to feel weird external pressures to make other things. Yeah.